Yes, Kenya is a food deficit country. We import a big percentage of our food for domestic consumption and the deficit has been growing as the population has been growing uh, because we've not been uh, investing in, in, uh, uh, in agriculture. Millions of Kenyans are currently severely food insecure. A United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs report says planned assessments in July and August are expected to confirm increased food insecurity with some estimates projecting over 3.5 million people facing an acute shortage. And due to this, the government and its partners have identified the Galana Kulalu Food Security Project as the key to unlocking the insecurity. During a tour to the 10,000-acre test farm being developed by the National Irrigation Authority, Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Peter Munoz says the project will go a long way in cutting down the country's reliance on importation of food products such as maize. Lana Kulalu was meant to be a solution for that problem of food security, especially for the value chains that we have we are, we are experienced deficit. Maize, uh, uh, sugar and others and that's why maize was the first crop to, to be started here uh, to see if this huge government land that is available here can be utilized to provide enough food uh, to cut down on importation and uh, also reduce costs of food. The termination of the contract of Green Arava and Israeli company tasked with the construction of the model farm, National Irrigation Board took over, and now the project is ready for uptake by private investors. As you have seen, the, the pilot is successful in the sense that you can see you can utilize technology, grow food. The project is in my opinion, very successful. Among the developments attained so far is creation of new pumping station, which has eight out of 15 pumps operating in the main project, then to the maize plantation where harvesting is going on. Invite private sector, invite people who have enough money, because that's, government doesn't have that kind of money, and government would rather use its money for other things and let private money drive the production. Moving forward is look at those challenges they have talked about here, make sure that there is power so that you get away from uh, expensive uh, fuel that is being used to, to run the system. So pull the power from the nearest grid and bring it here. Make sure also that there is a road because you can see accessing these places is very difficult because it's quite remote. Uh, so make sure there is a, a road linking to the main road so that you can be able to transport the food and the inputs to this place. Uh, and of course, in the future, I mean, the, the, I'm talking about things that need to be done now, but you also need to dam the water so that you have enough water, create and dam enough water so that you can expand the area under production. This is Climate Smart Agriculture. So when we realized that, when, especially when we took over from the contractor, we started practicing a technology called, that's conservation agriculture, but under irrigation. It's called, it is called scientifically uh, deficit, deficit irrigation. Agricultural productivity resulting from irrigation can be more than twice as high as per hectare basis than rain-fed production. <laughs> According to Dr. Rafael Wanjoy, a researcher at National Irrigation Board, the project is utilizing the installed irrigation infrastructure comprising of 20 center pivots covering 3,300 acres and 1,800 acres under drip irrigation system for production of maize and other high-value crops such as Bt, cotton, pineapples and bananas. Now we're using three types of irrigation systems. One is center pivot system and the drip system. You're also using the high overhead irrigation, using sprinklers, the one you're seeing here behind. And uh, 
the reason behind that is because when we came here, we know we are dealing with a soil that is, has a charge, the so, salinity and sodicity, sodium in it. So you have to manage water well. If you flood it too much, the, the, the salt come up and the sodium and the crop cannot grow. So that's why you see projects have failed in many of these areas. But we agree we go with the, what we call specialized irrigation systems, the center pivot and the drip and now the overhead irrigation, which you're seeing here. Uh, so far, the best is center pivot irrigation because it, does, it has requires only one pumping. And until we solve the issue of pumping, this still remains the best. Drip requires two, two pumping because water has to be pumped into a reservoir to settle down, to be uh, pure enough to enter through the drippers. Irrigation is critical to optimize the use of water in agricultural production, yet globally it constitutes of a high of 70% of water use and placing substantial pressure on natural water resources and flow patterns. However, according to the engineers here, the project was constituted to operate at the lowest river flow to determine the maximum area the normal flow can command. What remains is to work towards infrastructural efficiency so that the benefits of existing water resources can be stretched further to achieve greater and more effective agricultural production while helping the government achieve one of the big four agenda of food security. We have many other biological products which are best tested here for the first time in the country, like panagetics. We are putting this tomato, you've seen, the way they're producing, you've never seen like that before, the vegetable there. You've never seen it before like that. So there are those products, and I'm happy that our partners, friends we have worked with before, are giving us those products to test. And they are also seeing the result of that, and they're happy. So we expect this to be a major, what you call, boost or boom for our nation. Now that the model farm has achieved its intended objective, focus now shifts to investors through the public-private partnership in order to achieve the full potential of the Galana Kulalu Food Project. Linda Koskei, K24 TV.